gather round all of you who would listen. I have a tale to tell. A story of warriors and kings, a saga of dark magic, a legend of high adventure. Long ago, a series of dark spells were created with the power to enslave our world. Evil magic with no purpose but that of destruction. But before these spells could be invoked, they were stolen and broken apart. Dark and powerful. These words were not easily destroyed, and so were hidden about the world, branded onto the souls of innocents, cursing their lines for eternity. Men are mortal, and time can be the enemy of fear. All too soon we forget how the bee will sting and the fire will burn. As time passed, these families forgot what the marks were for, dismissing the ancient warnings about these words of power. They were merely stories, tales from a long past time. But an evil sect, known only as the Kasai, knew nothing of time, and with infinite patience they waited until their spells were rediscovered. were filled with the greatest and most honorable warriors who gave up everything for the cause of defending those marked. Many legends tell of the bravery of the Rakus and of their eternal struggle with the Kasai. Like these stories, mine begins long ago. But unlike any other that I know of, it also begins with the hero's death. I remember it all as if it were a dream. I, Kuzo, scout and chronicler to the great Rao Utu, flying over a white landscape through snow-filled skies, being drawn by a voice calling my name. Kuzo, it is I, Oracle to the Three Kingdoms, and I am in need of your service. Spirit Guide, something has happened that neither the gods nor I could foresee. Your master, Rao Utu, is dead. His death is unexpected, and has thrown the heavens into chaos. The gods are calling on you, spirit guide, to visit the past, and relive critical periods that led up to his death. We do not know when or how this happened, Kuzo. All we know is that Rao was betrayed. We were betrayed. Three destinies are intertwined with Rao's Kuzo. His sister, Tati and the Rakus warriors, Baumusu and Grizz. Travel with them all once more, rewalk their paths, and discover what has happened. All I know is that it will end in a decision that shapes the future of mankind. Let us travel back to when Baumusu and Grizz were mighty warriors fighting for the Rakus. Let us travel twenty years into your past, back to Tapu Roku and the pursuit of a traitor. Many years before I serve Rao, I traveled the land in the charge of Baumusu, a great and noble warrior. I remember journeying with him and his mentor Grizz on urgent Rakus business. We were to hunt down a fugitive to Rakus turned traitor called Maybisi before he located the final parts to the mark of Kree. Yeah! 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 
Uso! As soon as we landed on the shores of Tapuroku, we knew something was amiss. We had been warned that Maybisi had wealth and could hire mercenaries, but these men were no bought swords. They fought with too much passion, too much hatred. Only upon closer inspection did Grizz discover their real identity. They were outlawed members of an ancient cult known only as the Kasai.
Maybe he was a Turakus who had been dabbling in forbidden Kasai lore. He had discovered the whereabouts of the Mark of Kree and was attempting to retrieve its parts before he was discovered and stripped of his rank. He had located all the marks except two. We had been instructed to capture him and ensure that these final marks remain hidden. It seems strange to me now that nobody considered the Kasai a threat back then. They were all but wiped out. An old enemy long forgotten. But the Kasai had found one of the two remaining marks in Tapuroku. And now their attention shifted to the final mark.
My steel? I don't think so, Barbarian. Your steel is no longer a match for my skills. This is the fifth part, Rakus. Now I only need the child to complete the spell. We will die before we let that happen, traitor. You cannot stop me, Rakus. I already know her location. It's too late. No one can protect her. <clears throat> Kasai. I can smell their taint on you from here. Fool, Rakus! Kneel before me, who bear witness to my power! Chris, defend yourself! Dark magic is afoot! <laughs>
remember that the Kasai were not what they are now. Back then they were all but destroyed, yet there had been many of them at Tapuro, and maybe he commanded them like a general. And what of the strange beast conjured from the ground? It had been eons since anyone had possessed such magic. And maybe she studied enough of their black arts to command such creatures. Now maybe she had all of the parts to the mark of Kree save one. A mark that was on the back of a defenseless infant. We had many questions that needed to be answered. And so you return from the first path, Spirit Guide. From twenty years in the past. Back then, the Rakus were naive to Mabisi's treachery, and had no idea where it would lead. Bamusu and Grizz left for Vaitaku in search of answers, but we will return to their part in this story later. Spirit Guide, let us now leap forward in time twenty years to the next path we wish to walk. Back when Rao and his sister Tati were seeking information about the mark on her back, they wanted to learn more about the ancient spell that Tati bore, and about the nightmares that plagued her. That is how they came to the city of Nungari, and to me. Oracle's attention shifted to Tati, Rao's sister, now twenty-one and bitter at the world. Cursed with a line from The Mark of Kree, filled with anger and hatred for the Kasai, she walked a knife edge between good and evil as she sought to destroy those who had killed her family. Rao and Tati were searching for a tree that was an oracle. I remember him instructing her to be stealthful as we arrived at the outskirts of the city. Nangari was a dangerous place, and so they should split up. He would take to the roofs, while she, the streets. Go! 
years before, when Rao was young and in search of adventure, he had sought information from an oracle in Vaidaku. There he ate her fruit and learned of the Mark of Kree and other spells that cursed the Three Kingdoms. He had barely escaped with his life and later learned that the tree had been cut down by the Kasai and that he was the last to commune with her.
As a child, Rao remembers his tutor, Baumusu, speaking of the oracle and its importance to the Three Kingdoms. He also remembers a second tree being planted should the first ever be destroyed. This second tree was in Nungari, a Kasai city. To sneak into a Kasai stronghold like Nungari was foolish, but Rao sought advice from the oracle. He needed information about the strange skills that Tati was developing and the nightmares that plagued her.
Upon communing with the Oracle, she told him that Rao was one of the last of the Rakus, an ancient order of warrior knights charged with watching over those marked with the spells. Then she warned Tati to beware the temptation that came with her curse, for the mark was evil and would seek to manipulate her. She instructed them in their destiny, preordained by the gods. You should travel the land, seeking out those cursed with the mark, and ensure that they are protected. Some will be ancient scrolls hidden away, while others will be innocents, marked and oblivious to their importance. She also warned them to make haste in their quest. They were not the only ones with interest in these words of power. Someone else was collecting the spells. Someone was amassing a library of evil. The spells that had been hidden for so long were slowly being rediscovered, Kuzo. And you were all that stood between them and the Kasai. Over the next few years, you guided Rao and Tati as they sought the spells. One of these spells was hidden at the top of an immense tower called Basuku. The tower had been sacked years before, but the tomb containing the ancient scroll was not easily opened. Crafted by alchemists during the First Age, it had withstood all Kasai attempts to be opened. Only you knew how to open the tomb, Kuzo. Only you could retrieve the mark of Basuku. But only Rao could defeat the Gangoon priest that guarded it. Basuku. The tomb sat at its summit and would be defended every step of the way by dark forces of the Kasai or the Horde, as they had come to be known. Rao instructed Tati to be stealthful where possible, but to not shy away from a fight. The walls of the tower were carved from the mountain itself, and sound would not carry too far.
The tower proved to be well guarded. The Horde, as they were known, fought viciously when alerted and almost got the better of us once or twice. I scouted ahead, offering an insight as to what was further on. And up we climbed into the heart of the tower.
It was only one part of a spell that we sought, one line of which there were six others. But the Oracle had told us that with even one line missing, any spell would be rendered useless. Only when all of its parts were brought together could it be invoked. Locked away in a tomb at the top of the tower rested one line from an ancient spell, a birthmark that once belonged to a king. Now nothing more than a scroll of human skin. Ah!
As we approached the final staircase, the air about us seemed to thicken with the sickly sweet smell of incense. Tati complained to Rao that her mark was itching, a sensation she felt only when great evil was close. I tried to remember 
From where I knew this smell, I was sure that I recognized it. But before I could call out a warning, it was too late. Rao had already opened the door, and outside waiting for us was a Gangun priest. Otu, finally we meet. So, you're the one who killed our brother. Hmm. I thought you'd be taller. You are not well liked in my social circle, barbarian. Many want your head. I presume she's the one who's marked? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's her. It's very nice of you to bring her to me, Barbarian. You've saved us a lot of trouble. This is actually quite funny. Can't you see the irony in this? You came to steal a line from the Mark of Basuku and brought me one from the Mark of Kree. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Just perfect. Now just fall on your sword like a good boy and spare me the unpleasantness of having to kill you. Or, you can wait over there. <gasps> oh, feisty, eh? <laughs> That's good. That's good. But to us, your value lies not in your skills, but in your skin. We almost had you once before, little one. You shall not evade us. A second time. I guarantee your brother won't come to your rescue this time. I will kill him, have you flayed, and be on my way to Hassa before your skin is even cold. Wait! Patience, barbarian. It will begin soon enough. Maun gun rausoto fan umbaro. Maun gun rau soto fan un palu. Maun gun rau soto fan un palu. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so we learned of the Gangun's hunger for Tati's mark. Years before, Rao had battled a necromancer over the mark of Kree and triumphed. He hoped that with his death, the knowledge of his sister's secret would be lost. Alas, that was not the case. The necromancer was a Gangun priest, and now his brothers sought Tati's mark and retribution for his death. Rao killed his first Gangun years before. A high-ranking priest who was attempting to encant the Mark of Kree. Now a second priest had been taken by his bow, and the Kasai's hatred for Rao had become further inflamed. Which leads us to the next piece in Rao's destiny, Iguahatu. Built at the center of a lake bordered by the Three Kingdoms, Iguahatu is the capital for banking and trade. At its center resides the corrupt Imperial Banking Commission, and guarded within its walls, a line from the Mark of Omu. The spell is protected by Horde ranks, awaiting ships that will transport them east to Hasa, home of the Kasai. Revisit this path and help steal it, Kuzo. Guide them well. As we approach Iguahat, Rao and Tati adjusted their packs so they could be silent. Tati had brought puffer mushrooms with her. Deadly fungi that killed when triggered, perfect for traps. She had also been developing a new skill that caused Rao and I much distress. The mark on her back was empowering her with strange abilities. Bribing her with subtle tastes of what it and its kind could offer. She could now fog the minds of those around her, seeming to disappear. But as Rao and I watched Tati slowly master this new skill, we wondered what cost would come from tasting the dark magic. As was all that came from it.
had to make our way to the city's financial district and the heart of Ikuahatu. There in a vault, guarded night and day, was one of the ancient spells. Iguahatu's vaults were considered by many to be the safest place to hoard your treasure. But then, they hadn't counted on my companions and the skills of Arrakus. Ah!
My master and his sister were traveling farther from all that they knew, and I fear they were also beginning to drift apart. Tati was becoming a great warrior in her own right, but was quick to question the ways of the Rakus. Her mark was beginning to affect her, leaking whatever magic from which it was made. The spell was sweating dark magic that was slowly altering her personality. She now had less patience for her training and grew easily frustrated at Rao's tutorage.
The financial district was built like an ornate fortress, its decorative facades covering buildings designed for battle. Wherever possible, we avoided combat, sneaking over roofs and through alleyways, but sometimes a brawl could not be avoided, and I watched as my companions gracefully dispatched Kasai guards before silently moving on. <laughs>
Inside the vault, we found the mark of Omu. But it was not on a scroll as we had expected. It was on the back of a living child. Having to guide a terrified infant through the flames of battle was not what anyone expected. Praise the gods for whatever blessing they gave us that day. Tati comforted the child sharing a bond that all the marked felt. In a way, they were family, both cursed and shunned by the world. A terrified infant too young to understand all that he ever knew taken from him, just like Tati. Do you remember the palace of Yolo Mebisi and our rescue attempt, Kuzo? It was here where Grizz and Tati's destinies overlapped. Like Tati, Grizz, too, was marked with one of the ancient spells, and so was of value to the Kasai. For a decade, we thought that he had perished with Baumusu, but then word came from the south that he lived, and was being held in Mebisi's dungeons. I'm sorry to do this to you, Kuzo. Grizz was your friend, and rewalking this path will pull at old wounds. Ah, uh, the great and noble Grizz. Captured while rushing to Balmusu's aid ten years ago. For a decade, he rotted in a stinking Kasai dungeon before we got word that he was still alive. We were told that he had run three days straight to warn Balmusu of the imminent attack on their home, but had arrived too late. Tati, only a child then, Remember seeing her favorite uncle charging exhausted into the fray before disappearing beneath a mass of Kasai troops. That was her last memory of Grizz. And the last day of her childhood.
Leader of the Kasai. His presence was now felt all over the Three Kingdoms. The palace of Yolome BC. A grand structure built to honor their leader. Now a prison for all who dare question the Kasai. <laughs>
Grizz was closer to Tati than anyone, except maybe her brother. They were both marked and so shared a deep friendship, an unspoken union that transcended any blood bond. Tati had always felt a strong kinship towards the old warrior. They thought alike, and they fought alike. Now old enough to understand, she recognized why Grizz could comfort her from her nightmares like no other. Because he shared them. Oh! <laughs> 
Who's there? What? What do you want with me? Are you Rekus? Did the Or... Rao? Is that you, boy? <coughs> it is you. Come close, boy. Let me have a look at you. Rao, you're alive, boy. I never dared hope. Wait. No. Tati? Tati all grown up? Oh, by the gods. Uncle Grizz. We didn't know that you survived. We thought you died with Baumusu. We came as soon as we heard. We had no idea that you were here. What was that? We have to go. Uncle Chris, can you walk? Yes. Yes, I can walk. But wait, there's something I must... Quickly, back the way we came. Rao, that smell. Do you recognize that smell? Your footsteps have triggered my guard. <coughs> I am too valuable a prize to be safeguarded by the Horde. Maybe C left one of his pets as my keeper.
<coughs> Come close, Tati. They have finished me. No. No, no! Uncle Grizz! We came for you! Don't die! Not now, not after all this! We came as soon as we heard! We had no idea that you were here! Hush now, child. I know you would have come sooner, had you known. I thank the gods that you're both safe, and that I got to see you one last time. Listen to me, both of you. Beware, Nebisi, the one who leads the Kasai. He is powerful and cannot be killed by your blades. <coughs> his, his heart is gone. It has been removed and encased in crystal. <coughs> Re remember this. Uncle Chris, stay strong. We'll get you out of here. Shh. I'm not going anywhere, child. <coughs> Tis better that I die in battle than from this place. Wait. Ra. Listen to me, boy. My mark, you must take it with you. Do not leave it with them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, boy? Take my mark with you. <coughs> the Oracle, she is safe. Then the Rakos will fight again. Be careful, Tati. Maybe she watches you. <coughs> you are part of a grand plan, and shall one day rule the, the three kingdoms. <coughs> he, he seeks to control you. Rao, well, I'll do it. Let me do this for you. And so, another hero passed on. Painful memories sting my eyes, all the more bitter for having to relive them. This was the first time Tati had heard talk of her destiny, and how the Rakus planned to unite the three kingdoms against the Kasai. Before dying, Grizz had spoke of her importance and the ancient folklore that told of a queen unifying the land. What Grizz didn't mention, was that the Queen could unite the land for good, or for evil. You are aware, Spirit Guide, that originally I lived only in Vaitaku, where I aided the Rakus for many years. But out of desperation, I was forced to split my consciousness and create a second location where I might be reached should Vaitaku ever fall. As you well know, Kuzo, Vaitaku did fall. And if it were not for the heroics of your friends, I would now be under the control of the Kasai. Let us return to Baumusu and Grizz twenty years ago, back to their pursuit of Maybisi and the search for the final mark of Kree. With great haste, we flew from Tapuroku, and after many days of traveling, we approached the fortress of Vaitaku. What we saw shocked us. The stronghold of the Rakus was under siege. Its walls had been breached and Kasai troops were everywhere. The center of the fortress in the guise of an ancient tree was the Oracle, advisor to the Rakus and ambassador of the gods.
Kasai's offensive had been swift and merciless. Anyone who dared resist slaughtered. An enemy long thought vanquished had risen with unprecedented fury and had struck surgically at the heart of the Rakus. Vaitaku was a hidden fortress known only to the Rakus. This could mean only one thing. Betrayal from one of their own. Treachery from Maybisi.
Ishizi, a name destined to be spat with scorn. As an apprentice Rakus, or two Rakus, he had access to Vaitaku's oldest libraries. There he had learned of the Kasai and their spells of power. His interest turned into obsession, and obsession into lust, as he was slowly seduced by Hasa with unspoken promises of power. In exchange for betraying the Rakus, he would lead the Kasai and spread their dark word across the three kingdoms. <laughs>
Through secret passageways, we evaded most of the Horde, and found our way to the Oracle, still safe and protected within the confines of her gardens. The Oracle warned them of the rise of the Kasai, and how they sought the ancient spells. She urged them to go with haste to Tiru, a city under siege, and seek out two small children, one of whom bore the mark of Kree. She told us to then take her seed and seek out a garden at the center of Nungari, a desert city in northern Tika. There we were to bury it, so she could grow under the noses of those who would seek to control her. By planting her seed, she would escape the Kasai, and the world would have an alternate way to commune with the gods. Grizz and Baumusu, so we meet again. This time, though, you will. <laughs> oh, you got me. You got me, Baumusu. You're fast. <laughs> Great shot, Rakus. Fast and true. You should be commended. What is this? I gave up a little something that I didn't need anymore, Rakus. My heart. Take them! Almost so quickly. Find your way to the exit. Come <laughs> on. 
escaped into the fortress's catacombs and quickly lost the pursuing Kasai. Maybe he was in command of the Kasai force that he had led to Vaitaku. Caught off guard, betrayed by one of their own, the Rakus had been all but wiped out. Now Grizz and Baumusu had been sent on their most important mission. Rescue the child that bore the mark of Kree and plant the oracle seed so mankind could still commune with the gods. Reluctantly, we left Vaitaku, home of the Rakus, to Maybisi and the Kasai. Maybisi was growing more powerful. He had studied much Kasai lore and was now dealing with their gods and demons. His heart had been removed, taken from his chest and encased in crystal, securing his immortality. It was only a matter of time before he found those marked and restored the ancient spells. We shall revisit Grizz and Bamusu one last time, but for now we must return to Rao and Tati twenty years in the future. Daiharu, an impossible forest hidden safely atop a mile-high mesa, acres of ancient woodland, left untouched because of its improbable location. It is in Daiharu where the Kasai hold the mark of Usu, a terrible spell with the power to free their gods and demons. Secure this spell, spirit guide. But be aware that it is guarded by a tribe of the bear god, and by another Gangoon priest. Tribe of the bear god. Vicious warriors who live to fight and wear their opponent's bones as armor. Rao's exploits against his tribe are legendary. Ten years before, he was tricked into entering one of their forests and barely got out alive. As we approached Daiharu, I remember how he became more withdrawn, sharpening his blades and straightening his arrows. He knew more than anyone what we were about to face.
Tati had barely spoken since Gris's death. Only in her dreams did we hear her crying out, arguing with some unseen foe. Her hatred for the Kasai was at a boiling point. She was thrilled by combat and took too much pleasure in the killing. We feared that dark forces within her were seeking control and would strive to use her hatred against her. The tribe of the Bear God fought hard. War their way of life, death something they didn't fear. Although desperately evil and whores to the Kasai, Rao respected them. They cherished the sweat of battle as he did. Never had he met a more capable foe.
and steel we fought our way through the ranks of warriors and as we approached the shrine to their bear god we recognized the familiar stench of a gangun priest Murderers of my brethren, it is time for retribution.
What can you hope to achieve against Harsa's might? It is too late for your world. We already have a complete spell. We now have the power to free our gods. Let me help you join your foul gods, Kasai. Good, good. Feel your anger, child. Kree is coming and will favor someone with as much hatred as you. We had arrived too late. The spells had been transported to Hasa, and even now were being prepared for incantation. Kree, the dark god of the Kasai, as old as time itself, a demon king cast out and imprisoned by the gods of light. Could it be that the Kasai now had the knowledge to free him from his ancient bonds? So the Kasai sought to free their dark god Kree and unleash him on the Three Kingdoms. I do not have to tell you, Kuzo, that his release would mark the end of times. And what of Tati? Is she destined to be the queen that unites the Three Kingdoms? Our journey's end is drawing close, Spirit Guide. But first you must visit the darkest reaches of the Three Kingdoms. Rutu Tehuru, home to the Horde, army of the Kasai. It is in these dark caves the Kasai recruited a vast army a cannibalistic race of savages eager to do their bidding. The leader of the Horde is the highest order of Gangoon, second only to Maybisi himself. Only on his command do they attack, only on his dark word do they kill, rape, and cannibalize the Three Kingdoms. Kill the priest, and the Kasai's grip on the Horde will slip. They will never expect such a move as none willingly enter Rutu Tehuru. Hundreds of leagues of tunnels connecting a worn-like city built beneath a mountain. Thousands of horde troops ready to slaughter any who dare enter their domain. And in control, a Gangun priest well-versed in the dark arts. To willingly enter Rutu Tehuru. Now, this is the stuff of legends.
Down we went deep into the belly of the mountain, its fiery core singeing my feathers. Many times did we clash in angry loud battles, the noise thankfully lost in the fury of the volcano. Never in all my years could I remember a place so terrible and more reflective of its owners.
base of the mountain was the entrance to the massive tower that ran its length. Only by throwing four well-guarded switches would we be able to gain access to the tower and face the priest. Exhausted and slick with sweat, Rao and Tati pressed on.
As we climbed the immense tower, Tati grew uneasy. Her mark began to burn fiercely as the sickly sweet smell of the Gangun permeated the air. Ahead was a priest second only to maybe see himself, a powerful sorcerer with the entire horde bent to his will. Show yourself, sorcerer! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> no, Ralph! It's the priest! Defend yourself! <laughs> <laughs> the horde.
Once more, I found myself called to the Oracle, back to her world of white. So far, I had revisited eight periods in time, eight events that led to Rao's untimely end. But if he was not to perish in Rutu Tehuru, then where? Where in this world is there a place more terrible than here? Where in all of the three kingdoms is there a place with the capacity to kill my master than in these dark tunnels? Before I could answer my own question, I was back with the Oracle. It is the place that dare not be mentioned. It is the darkest of the dark. It is a place where men fear to tread, and where gods dare not look. Its name is followed by a thousand whispers. Hasa. 
Merely speaking its name burns your mouth and signals the darkness. This place is the root of all evil in the Three Kingdoms. From here the Kasai spread their foul message and taint the land. Guide them well, Kuzo. We are approaching the end of our journey together. Even now I dare not mention its name. That dark temple, home to the evil that had befallen the three kingdoms. To the east infecting the land, the Kasai's black mantle spread as far as the eyes could see. And there, like a sore at its center, was Hasa. Rao and Tati worked together, slowly ascending the temple's many levels. They worked together, yet there was a distance between them. Bitterness had overtaken them, and they gritted their teeth with unspoken argument and silent anger.
They were growing apart, each with their different opinions, each feeling strongly about the path they should take. But there was more to it than a simple disagreement. Since entering Hassa, their emotions had become amplified. With hindsight, I wish that I could have warned them of what was ahead, but I returned to each piece of destiny with no memories, lest I should unwittingly alter their path. Now, only they could determine their course. The future of mankind now hung by the tenuous threads of Rao and Tati's fraying relationship. Tati, my queen, I have been waiting for you. I am here to kill you, maybe see. Nothing more, nothing less. <laughs> Before you kill me, Tati, why don't you listen to what I have to say? Like you, I was marked. I too was hunted, scorned, and shunned by those around me. Cast out and resented, hated, and feared. The Rakus took me into their numbers to protect me. <laughs> they have no idea the power that these markings possess. Protect me! It should be us protecting them! I fought with them. I argued that we should use the spells for ourselves. Armed with this ancient magic, nothing would stand against us. Nothing would dare oppose us. <laughs> they didn't listen. They told me that the marks were evil. That they had the power to manipulate. That they could blacken and change a man's heart. Ooh, scary stuff, Tutty. <gasps> Evil that will manipulate you if you listen to it. Oh. <laughs> kind of stuff you tell kids if you want them to do what they're told, maybe. The sort of stories you might come up with if you were, say, jealous. The sort of things you would say if you wanted to control something that you fear! So I betrayed them. I told the Kasai where their secret fortress was. I told them when and where to strike. Now, the Kasai, they listen to you. We come from lines of nobility destined to rule the land, Tati. We are marked, but not cursed, blessed. How else would you explain your awakening powers? No one will ever understand you more than I. We are the same, Tati. Child, do you pay no heed to the prophecies of your own kind? Do you not understand that many destinies are overlapping here today? It is my destiny to free a god. It is your destiny to rule by his side. It is our destiny to unite the three kingdoms under the Kasai. BC. You are a slave to your destiny, but I am free to choose my own. I bend to no prophecy. I am master of my own fate. I will never be queen. I will never unite the three kingdoms, and I will never be Kasai or Rakus. I am Tati Utu, sister to Rao Utu, adopted daughter of Baumusu, and I choose my own path. Prepare to die, sorcerer! Very well. The Rakus end here, today. Now I will free Kree and be his host in this world!
so at last my journey was over. This had been the fracture. This was the point where fate had stumbled and the Kasai intervened. But Rao did not die at the hands of his sister, and treachery did not once again splinter the Rakus. The Oracle's work was done and destiny had been corrected. Maybisi, Lord of the Kasai, lay slain and his army scattered. The three kingdoms were released from Hassa's cold grasp, and the spells restored to their rightful place. Through her mark, Maybisi had been poisoning Tati's mind, working to turn her against Rao and finally defeat the Rakus. But Tati was strong and the blood of her forefathers ran thick in her veins. All the darkness in the Three Kingdoms could not turn her against her brother. They were both of the line of Oto and legends in the making. In all of her years, Tati never had a choice. She was born cursed, and her life was never her own. Now, for the first time, she is in control of her own destiny, and will answer to no one. In their haste, the Rakus protected the spell and forgot about the person. Tati Utu has now created her own path. Who knows where it will lead? Kuzo, spirit guide, you have done well. Calm has been restored to the heavens, and destiny prevails. The gods owe you their favor. You shall be remembered for this. It is time once more for you to take up your charge and go about the tasks set forth in your destiny. You are a spirit guide. You are a scout for the great Wao Utu, sent from the heavens to steer him in his many adventures. Your master is a legend who shall roam the Three Kingdoms, protecting it from Hasa and the evil of the Kasai. The security of the Three Kingdoms rests in his calloused hands. While his safety falls on your shoulders, spirit guide, you are his guide, teacher, and chronicler. Go from here, back to the beginning, back to your first meeting, then guide him well, Kuzo. There are many adventures ahead. And so this story draws to an end. Or maybe it stumbles across its own humble beginnings. As soon as we reached Tiru, I flew ahead quickly and guided the Rakus to the marked child that maybe she sought. Tiru was under siege and Kasai troops were everywhere looking for the infant. I found her, hidden away in an ancient temple. Screaming and terrified, she had attracted the Kasai's attention. All that stood between her and them with the valiant efforts of her brother. Just a boy, but somehow managing to keep the Kasai at bay. Get up! 
Step aside, Rakus. The child is mine. Maybe, see. I thought I smelled Gangoon. We'll die first, Kasai. Oh, I know, I know. Kill them! Kill them all! Oh. <laughs> generations of Rakus, the last of their kind, on a mission of utmost importance. To find a garden at the center of a city, then plant the oracle seed. They needed instruction as to where they should hide the child, and so for the last time, Baumusu and Grizz communed with the oracle. Baumusu, Grizz, I am indebted to you both. You have plucked both the child and I from the hands of the Kasai. Even now, Mabisi rages. Take the children and head north of Taporoku to an inn by a lake. There you will find Rongo, its owner, a warrior sympathetic to our cause. Raise the children and train them well. But you must keep the girl's mark hidden and never tell them of her value to the enemy. Upon these children, the future of the Three Kingdoms depends. Rao and Tati. Two children who would so shape my future and that of our world. Rao, whose name would be whispered to calm children on stormy nights. Hero of the Three Kingdoms, destined to one day sit amongst gods. And of course, Tati whose story has yet to be written, be it good or bad. I still have more to tell, but am weary, so must leave that for another day. 